Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at Emacs's Transporter 2 HD goggles. And this one is specifically for HD0, so you need to be flying a video transmitter and camera that have this logo on them. If you're flying analog, Vista, Link, or uh, Walk Snail, these don't work with that. Very important to note that it's specific for HD0, which is good because it gives us an additional option for anyone who is enjoying HD0 to maybe share HD0 with someone by handing them this screen. Yeah, it does separate, uses magnets across the front, and it also helps people who might have uh, glasses or different focal lengths that they need because these transport, I'll get it here in a second, out. So they can extend and they can bring that screen further away and help your focus. If you wear glasses and say they're glasses like mine, they don't fit. So you're going to need to have pretty small profile glasses. We will measure that distance uh, when we get down to the desk. So this can obviously attach to a tripod or to a mount on the top of your radio or anywhere else by using that screw hole on the bottom. It also has a USB port over here for charging and you can use an external USB power source in order to get more running time out of this. This has a 22 milliamp battery in it and I found that in my flights, while I wasn't outside all that much, so I had to do a lot of my flying inside when I was testing this out, uh, that I, it can run for approximately 50 minutes. It's about what I did and a battery was low, but it wasn't out yet. So you may get a bit more than that or you may get a bit less because I think I did turn it off during one section. I think I had to come down to my computer and do some beta flight changes. So uh, just know the runtime isn't going to be really long. So having an external power source uh, would be a good idea if you have flying sessions, actual flying sessions where you're wearing the goggles and they're powered on for more than that. But that can always vary. As you can tell at the front, we have uh, a fan up there that is standard with all HD0 VTXs, and we have our button interfaces here on the front as well. It does have our little port right here on the side so that we can update our firmware as all of our HD systems now require somewhat frequent firmware updates for both the goggles and the video and or camera. Uh, and right down here is our SD card that is spring loaded in here so we can pull that right out does come standard with these linear or rubber ducky sort of antennas. You can probably improve the reception, whether it's range or the clarity of the image by using higher quality, maybe circularly polarized antennas. The base of the goggles does have this three mount position so that it keeps the weight off your nose. It's something we went to a number of years ago with this sort of box goggles that because their weight is front end loaded, it can sometimes rest on your nose from that nose piece. This helps keep that up off your nose. And we have a, a rubberized gasket so that light leak doesn't get about doesn't get inside uh, when we've extended these transporter goggles out uh, the foam faceplate is pretty typical pretty normal for this sort of stuff uh, it is soft it's not hard it's not super soft I would say it's in the medium about what we expect these days with a pretty large nose cut out so depending upon your nose size and really your face shape you may see a little bit of light leak come in from the sides or down through the nose Typically in this day and age, I don't find that to be distracting. It's something as doing reviews, you kind of look for and then you notice it. And of course, to do the test, I went with the Emacs Apex 5, which is the third time in the last two years I have flown a five inch quad, but it's the second time around for this particular quad. It does come with a USB-C cable. So as we mentioned previously, you can plug it in right over here and you can give it additional power or that's just how you charge it when you're not in use. This is our HD0 firmware cable that we can use for updating. It's on the other side as I get around to that. That plugs in right in there. You plug the other side into your VTX for uh, HD0 firmware updates. And of course, it does come with a support card with QR codes. A little bit closer look here so you can see that rubber gasket in there. It is a very rubbery kind of, I don't want to say premium because I'm sure it wasn't terrible expensive, but, but this is one of the Emacs designs really uh, where they innovated uh, this sort of telescoping and uh, keeping the light out to the maximum degree. As you can also see there, you can see there's some screws holding in that Fresnel lens, which is our magnifying lens. So you may find that if this doesn't quite fit your eyesight, uh, maybe remove that and replace it with a different one if you have that skill set. Uh, people also take lenses and glue them inside a box goggle to create the clarity that they need, as well as our magnets around the sides. Our buttons here on the back, this is our up-down button, 
here on the side. If you long press this button, it will go to auto scan, which can work a majority of the time. Whenever I get comments of people that have had problems with uh, reception, I tend to ask them to tune to a specific channel rather than using auto scan. So if your range is not what you expect, uh, make sure you're matching what exactly is on your VTX through Betaflight or the menu for the VTX uh, to what your goggles are running. Of course, on this side, we have our boot button and our OK for driving interface. And down here is our boot switch. If you were to have a failed update, say the power goes out while you're updating the HD0 firmware on this uh, goggle, uh, you need to use this boot switch, but you will find full instructions on the Emacs website. If we long press the up button, we press and hold, we will get into the HD0 menu here, which operates just like you would expect. It's kind of what we've come to see and expect from HD0. We're gonna go into the playback so I can show you that flight with the Apex. Uh, it will give you an idea of the reception in my space. Of course, I don't fly it a long ways out. As we're taking off, the playback is choppy on this. Uh, my In past videos, I have actually done live recording. So I've taken a camera and I've stuck it in the uh, box goggle to show what the screen looks like. I think I can control the inv lighting environment a lot better doing it this way, but we will have to put up with a little bit of uh, choppy playback because I did double check this against other SD cards and it was choppy with all of them. So that's just something that we're going to have to put up with during the course of this little flight portion of the review. Uh, this is on the, again, the Apex 5, which has the 200 milliwatt whoop board, what we oftentimes call the whoop board, but not the 1S whoop board. Um, so we're limited to 200 milliwatts, and I already circled the front side of the house, and you could see the breakup that we received uh, during that portion. My house is made of cement board siding as well as concrete on the face of the house. It is a two-story house. Uh, generally speaking, I have to have 200 milliwatt in order to be able to circle the house. I don't go down into my neighbor's yard or anything like that during this particular video. There should be a number of videos out on this goggle. So do your research if you're looking at reception and take note of the different environments and different reception. The reception is a variable in this hobby. If you're close to a cell tower or you're close to maybe the police radio towers, I'm not certain about that one, but it's potentially any sort of RF that you have, including your home Wi-Fi can be problematic when it comes to FPV and our reception. So it's something to definitely take note of and do our best to try to avoid that. One of the things I do to avoid traditional Wi-Fi interference is to fly race band eight. In this particular case, I'm flying race band one. Race band eight is a frequency up above the Wi-Fi frequency. And traditionally, it can really help uh, with our video reception, especially when it comes to analog uh, video reception. You can see we had some high winds and one of the chairs got pushed over onto its side. Uh, that is just kind of common for the course out here. Our weather has been very, very poor, as in a good portion of the U.S. Uh, has had some pretty poor weather. Uh, we were not immune from that. It actually, this day was pretty daggum cold. Uh, my recollection from and from my notes was that it was in the low 30s uh, with relatively high winds and my fingers would get numb. So I only flew this three times outside because I had to keep going back inside and warming up my fingers. I know, fly with gloves, get one of those bags, put on your radios. I've tried all sorts of different techniques in order to fly in the cold and keep my fingers nimble and warm. It just hasn't worked for me. Either I'm ineffective in the flying or I'm uncomfortable uh, or I just couldn't keep my fingers warm enough. So this is just our flight sample. You can see across the bottom there, we have our fast forward and our rewind and our play pause button. Uh, we use the arrows on the back side of the radio as well as the okay in order to activate and deactivate all those different things. You can see the HD0 OSD. It says we're providing channel R1 at the top center. Then we have our, uh, well, it's our pilot name, but oftentimes in my case, it's usually the quad name and the Hawk Apex. Uh, we have our battery voltage in the top left at, at uh, 3.71 volts. Uh, more HD0 OSD information is available on the top right. That gives us our reception. Uh, note two antennas, not four like on the other VTX. So I think one of the things that people might also be concerned about is that the screen is held on with magnets and this is not exactly inexpensive or cheap. You know, it's uh, more than a nickel. Uh, actually the price at uh, $239.99 off of Emacs's website. But uh, as you can see here, that screen doesn't come out. Matter of fact, when you're coming to pull it out, 
you do have to give it a pretty good tug and a little bit of an angle in order to get it cleanly out. I think what's most important is when you put it back to make sure it's fully seated all the way around because there were a few occasions where I put it in and I didn't quite get it. I don't know if you can see that here on the bottom. It's not quite all the way and it's staying in, but it will pop out if you don't get it fully seated. If it's sealed all the way around inside this little housing, stays on pretty good. So I don't think that's too much concern under normal handling circumstances. Also during that section where I was showing you the playback, you may have heard a whizzing sound. Yeah, that's the fan. Uh, that's normal. It's not a grinding or whining sort of low quality fan sound. It's air movement. You know, when you blow air past another object that's stationary, it creates noise. And in this case, we have a guard up here that keeps us from getting other things in the fan. So that's creating the noise that you may have heard while I was doing that playback. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise about the Emacs Transporter 2 or really anything on the channel, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.